We now welcome to the show a man who has won three Super Bowls as a vice president of player personnel with the New England Patriots. He's been a general manager elsewhere, and now he is on the NFL Network with us. Ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome back Scott P. Hey, what's up, Scott? Uh, what's up, Scott? Good morning, everyone. Happy Tuesday. Happy Tuesday is right, unless you are an L.A. Rams fan. As the Rams wake up this morning, they are currently still in the playoff position, but they have lost three straight games. They look out of sorts, and with all of the moves that they've made this season, there clearly were higher aspirations when they made those deals at the trade deadline. So a few weeks ago, we asked you if you were still a believer in this Rams team. Two more losses. What do you got to say now? You know, Peter, you asked me right as they were making those changes to their roster. And I said at the time that the jury was out because I wasn't sure what they were going to be as they added those pieces. Since they've added those pieces, meaning OBJ and Von Miller, they're 0 and 3. And we've talked about this before, whereas you can add talent to your team, but your talent has to fit. This is a team game that matters on relationships and chemistry and people doing things together. So right now, they won so many games at the beginning, right? They were seven and one before they acquired these two players and lost the three straight. At seven and one, they're likely going to be a playoff team. They did enough at the beginning of the season. They have a somewhat friendly schedule coming up at the end run. So I do expect them to win or you know make the playoffs, possibly win the division. But to me, the bigger issue is I don't see them as a championship football team right now. I see them a team with a lot of star power names but not necessarily a championship football team. So I'm still not sold and all in on the Rams. Well, how about a team in the NFC that has both, Scott? Let's talk about the Buccaneers. You've said this before. Hmm. It doesn't matter if you have Tom Brady. You can't just run the same team out there. You can't just run it back and expect to win a Super Bowl. you got to get better. you got to evolve. When you look at this Bucs team that just had a great win over the Colts, who is a player somewhere in their roster who has made huge hmm. improvements from last year and could be the difference in this year's team? Kyle, to me, it's Leonard Fournette, right? He's been playoff Lenny. Last year, he was playoff Lenny. He had a better playoff season than he did a regular season. His rookie year with the Jacksonville Jaguars, he was better in their playoff run up to the AFC Championship game than he was in the regular season. But this year, Leonard Fournette is coming along as a better player. He's in the top 15 in the NFL in terms of rushing. But most importantly, what he is, he's number three overall in terms of running backs and the number of receptions that he has. So he's, again, become a really important weapon for Tom Brady. And the importance of a running back in the Tom Brady passing game, in the, it, where it enables Tom to drop and dump things off, is critical. So what you can see is they've developed chemistry, and chemistry with the leader Tom Brady on offense is so important. So to me, Leonard Fournette has been an important part of this offense continuing to move forward where they've had some other issues. Yes, yeah, Scott, I've said uh, Leonard Fournette. I think he's the glue to this offense. He can do it all, and he helps this offense be versatile enough to be able to play any game that an opposing defense uh, presents to him. But yesterday we asked what was the most impressive part of the Patriots' resurgence uh, from their 79-2020 season hmm. to now. How would you answer that question? Mike, Rob, I would say that it's the way that this collection of players from the outside has come together as a team, again, they brought in a lot of pieces and parts, very similar, a little bit different, but similar to what we did in 2001, where we signed a lot of free agents. They brought in a lot of very good players that really didn't have relationships with one another, didn't know one another. They weren't sure where the leadership was coming from. They knew it was going to be McCourty. They knew it was going to be Hightower. They weren't so sure if it was going to be Mac Jones. They knew it was going to be Andrews on the offensive line. These guys have come together. You know, it was interesting. I was up there for several days in training camp this year and watched the team. I saw the talent. I saw the relationship. I saw the guys interacting. And I said to myself, oh, this might be something pretty interesting to watch if they can get on a roll this year. And they've done that. So to me, the collection of the players from the outside that have come together reminds me of a lot of teams that, again, are better as a sum than the individual parts, opposite of a team we were just talking about. Mm, well said. Pioli, I want to talk about Sean O'Hara. If you know Sean O'Hara, he's like the most pleasant, affable man on the planet. So I was very amused when he was on our show last week and he was uh, in as a co-host. And he, he had real beef. He had a real issue with Aaron Rodgers, with quarterbacks giving away too much information about their injuries. And then 
the next day we came back and we were laughing because Aaron Rodgers propped his foot up. Do we have to see that? I don't, oh, I don't, yeah, think, I don't need to see Coming it. hot. Okay, so he puts his bare foot up to the camera, which everyone has seen, to give us the status and details on his toe. What is your take on quarterbacks being so vocal about their injuries? Sorry, that threw me off. I didn't know if that was toe cheese or cheese curds he had on that foot. Okay. That Ew. was pretty close. Look, anyway, so, <laughs> so I'm with Sean O'Hara 100% on this. I couldn't agree with him more because there's a lot of quarterbacks, it seems, their injury information is getting out, either through them directly in the case of Aaron Rodgers or their camp. But it also seems like there's a lot of players where that information, their injury issues, their circumstances are coming out more and more this year. I remember when I was first in the NFL with Belichick, you know, when we started at the Cleveland Browns, and it was like top secret information. No one could talk about injuries. It was taboo. No one talked about injuries. But it was never said as to why we couldn't talk about injuries. It was just, you don't talk about injuries, so you don't do it. A couple of years later, I started to notice that there was this group of coaches and people who believed in not talking about injuries. And it all kind of came from the Parcells tree. But when I was with Parcells in 97, 98, 99, he explained it. And his feeling was this, that if a player was talking about injuries, he was trying to do one of two things. He was either trying to protect himself in case he failed. So if he didn't play well, of course he didn't play well because there was an injury. But if he played injured and he was successful, well, then he was some sort of superhero, and he was bigger and better than the rest of the team and separating himself from the team. And it was something that Parcells really didn't like because it was about the individual trying to protect himself or elevate themselves. So I'm a big believer and come from that camp that injury shouldn't be talked about because really it becomes about self more than the team. Yeah, it's true. All right, today is the 50th anniversary of the release of one of the greatest movies of all time, Brian's Song. Earlier in the show, we played We In or We Out, so let's ask you a question, Scott. Brian's Song is the greatest football movie mm. ever made. We in or we out? I'm in. Are you kidding me? Brian's Song. Yeah, 50 years ago today, it was released, one of the greatest football films, or the greatest football film of all times. Okay, got a little up here, Brian Piccolo, who unfortunately succumbed to cancer, was a teammate of Gail Sayers. They had this incredible relationship. It was in the late 60s, early 70s, when race issues were at a, you know, a boiling point, and they came together. And this story, this movie, you know, with James Caan, I don't care how many football movies come out, Brian Song is the best football movie of all time. James Caan, Billy D. Williams oh. as the great Gail Sayers, one of the greatest films. 1971, Scott, let's celebrate Brian's song today. Let's celebrate you as well. Great job on the show oh, as Scott. always. Thanks, everybody. Have a great week.